Hello beauties, it's Brittany. Welcome back to my channel today. You might notice a slight difference. I did a little temporary pink in my hair. Today's the first day that I've like styled it, as in curling it, which is pretty much the only style that I know. I really, really love it. I use the brand Punky Color. I will have it linked in the description bar below. I bought mine at Ulta on a recommendation and I'm loving it. Just a little disclaimer though, it does come off on your pillowcases. I have white pillowcases. Woke up this morning to a little pink surprise, uh, but I still really, really love it. I also have uh, washed my hair one time, and this is kind of what is left after washing it once. So that's that. Let's go ahead and get on to some makeup. Alex and I are going out to dinner tonight. Very pumped about that. I must have my hair out of my face while I am doing my makeup. So I am wearing my little cat ears that I got at Target. It's the only headband left in the store and I'm clipping back the rest of it with a little clippy-doo. Isn't this mug adorable? Alex's cousin got it for me. It says, I just want to drink wine and pet my dogs, but it also works good for vodka and LaCroix. Works good, works well. That cup is not Superman. Let's start with priming the eyelids. It's funny, I uploaded a video uh, titled, I'm Grumpy, and so many people in my actual life messaged me, reached out to me, about that video and said that that was like the truest me I've ever been on YouTube and I found that hilarious because I literally filmed it and was not going to upload it because I thought I was just being such a whiny baby uh, but I did and it got really good response so apparently I just need to uh, let loose and be a little more myself. Not saying that the self I show you guys is not my true self it's just a little more tamed down a little more professional. You know what I'm saying? We are nowhere near getting on to lips, but I wanted to talk about this really quick. I picked up the Kylie, what are these called? Like they're liquid lips because they're now available at Ulta. And I got the shade Goals, which is the perfect shade. It matches my lip liner from Makeup Forever in the shade 22. Like these two paired together, Goals. If this stuff does not damage my hair, I think I might do like a teal or something like that next. We shall see. I'm going to make myself look really crazy and I'm going to do my brows first before I do anything else. And I always laugh at my videos when I'm editing them and I have my brows done and nothing else on my face because I look like an alien. So first I'm going in with the ColourPop Brow Boss in the shade Auburn. I've been using this recently it's in my everyday kind of drawer and i really do like it i definitely recommend it for naturally red hair people out there in the world if you are like me then uh, i think you will like it l'oreal came out with this new brow product it reminds me a lot of like the wonder brow situation i have to start this debate with you guys i do not fully understand brow products like this and the way that they are packaged because it is not user friendly at all I don't understand why this is like a lipstick, lip gloss, liquid lipstick gloss situation. It's like, you know, that doe foot applicator style. And I'm supposed to take this brush that it does come with and take a little bit off of the top here and then put that in my brows and then brush it through. None of it seems very user friendly, very quick. None of that, uh, but let's go ahead and see what it looks like. I'm using the blonde shade because it did not appear in the little PR package that they had any kind of red-headed color, so I normally just go to blonde if that's the case, which is not great. Like, I just don't understand these style products. I have the Wonder Brow. The color match is really good, but I don't use it a lot because it's literally such a pain to use because you have to... Pull this out, take this brush, brush the right amount of product onto the brush in a way that's not clumpy because the second you put it onto your brow, it's going to disperse way too much product in one spot. So you have to be very feathery with it. So they just don't make a lot of sense to me. I don't know if that made much of a difference, but are you telling me as innovative as the makeup industry is, we cannot come up with something a little better than this situation. I don't believe it and I don't accept it. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with my eyes and I don't even know what I'm wearing. Since the pink is in my hair, I really have had to kind of reevaluate my color situation because everything I own is like neon colored and uh, when your hair is neon colored, 
kind of clashes. I'm going to take the Wet n Wild Brulee eyeshadow and set that eyeshadow primer that I put on like a million years ago already. That's what happens when you get me ranting about brows. Do I not look like an alien with my brows done and nothing else? You could be honest. So I have a new like drawer system on my desk and if you want to see an updated vanity tour let me know in the comments down below but I've been organizing everything into drawers in terms of like steps. So this is like my first step drawer. I've got my eyeshadow primer, I've got my brow stuff and this has kind of been helping keep my mind a little more organized when I sit down to do my makeup. Not that I've been doing my makeup a lot but you know what I'm saying. I'm going to use the Clarins SOS Primer. Just drop the cap because I drop everything. I'm so sad right before this video I was gonna spray some fragrance on because I like to smell good and it gives me confidence. So I was about to spray my Lancome Le Via Belle fragrance which is one of my all-time favorite fragrances and when I wear that one I get compliments when I go out in the world which is not often but when I do and by out in the world I mean out at Target. Uh, people stop me like in the aisles at Target and are like what are you wearing? And I went to grab it and the cap popped off, but it was in air when the cap popped off. And so the fragrance hit the ground. And the second I saw it start to fall, I knew it was the end of it. Not that it shattered, but the spritzer like collapsed down into itself. And now I cannot spray the fragrance. So if you have any recommendations in terms of fixing that, please let me know in the comments down below because my heart is broken. A little bit of Urban Decay Pore Perfecting. Uh, so I probably won't be wearing that one tonight because I don't know how to get it out of the bottle now. But my hands do smell like it, so at least I have that going for me right now. Because of course I tried to fix it and all of it got all over my hands. Maybe my face will now have tons of breakouts because I'm just slathering perfume hands on my face. I have the Urban Decay Cherry Palette and I actually have literally not touched it at all but I feel like it might be a little much with the hair. What do we think? Or is it just right? I think tonight might be the night, guys. I'm gonna grab some tape. I always make sure to put it on the back of my hand because if you don't, you will pull the skin around your eyes, which is never something you want to do. I mean, maybe you want to. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but I don't want to. I do enjoy the double-ended brushes that that Urban Decay puts in here, but I don't keep them in the palette. I actually put them in my makeup artistry kit, like my train case, because I can't stick them in my cup on my desk. I can't put them in the palette because then I'll never use it. And uh, the tape is coming off. Okay, let's start with the Morphe R39. I'm gonna start with Hot Spot, even though I already set my eyeshadow just because I, my eye primer, because I want to see how light it is. It's quite a bit lighter than Creme Brulee. I'm just kind of highlighting the brow bone. Should I do one eye and come back? No, I feel like we should legitimately play with it together. Okay, let's go into Juicy. Let's see how that goes. There seems to be quite a lot of fallout, which is very unusual with Urban Decay. Yeah, the formula of these shadows is definitely different than any of their other Naked palettes, which who's still sad about seeing the original Naked palette say goodbye to all of us? It just felt like a... Uh, a shift in the universe that day. Okay, I love this shade. I'm such a fan of burgundies and peaches. Right up my alley. Okay, I'm gonna go a little smoky, which is why I put the tape. I wanna do like a very precise wing as well. I love this brush by Morphe. It reminds me a lot of my Sigma E25, which is so funny. These were like free gifts way back in the day when you would order from Sigma, and I have three of them, and they are my most prized possessions like these brushes if anything ever happens to these and actually one of them did break off and I glued it back together because I love this brush so much literally have three of them and they stay like front center of my little brush cup and they're very short they're definitely shorter than like a standard eyeshadow brush but guys these are like my most used brushes so the Morphe uh, one that I'm using right now is similar and the MAC 217 is very similar as well but but this one is more like a collectible to me I use this one so much less <laughs> I wish I could just have you guys all over and we could just do our makeup together and jam out to some music I was listening to music right before this what kind of music do you guys like uh, Alex and I went to see 
Bohemian Rhapsody. And so I've loved Queen, but ever since watching that, I'm more obsessed and I cannot stop listening. It is what has been on repeat in our house is just like the Spotify or Pandora playlist of Queen. Okay, I'm going to take feels, all the feels. I'm still using the same brush. I am so lazy when it comes to cleaning my brushes, so I like to dirty as little amount of brushes as possible. Mm, it's not really adding any purple hue, which I thought it would. Favorite blending brush is this BH Cosmetics one that has no number on it. It's funny how these things come into your life and are like your favorite thing to reach for and you're like, what even is that? Where did I get that? When did it come into my life and what did I do before? Because there had to be a time in my life before this brush, but I don't know what I did before then. I feel like I definitely have to go in with devilish, so that's what my next move's gonna be. Not sure how dark it's gonna be because that feels color was very, very light. So let's start with a little and build it up. I'm a little confused at the formula of these eyeshadows. It's giving me like uh, Lorac vibes with the consistency and kind of dustiness of it. I'm really concentrating this on the inner corner but kind of messily popping it in further as well. Popping it? I don't think I've ever said that before. Ah. Story of my life, dropping everything including my favorite perfume. I wouldn't say favorite. That uh, Narcis Narc Narcisco Rodriguez for her Oh, that stuff's magical. But La Via Belle is definitely one that I get most complimented on in the world. Do you think if I brought it to Ulta, they would help me out? Because that's where I got it from. It's a very expensive fragrance. I'm very sad about this, if you can't tell. Okay, kind of like where we're coming along here. It does look a little crazy with the pink hair, but whatever. Let's go in with Privacy, which is the matte brown, it appears, on the end here. We're going to really start to... Deepen up this outer corner. I prefer to use dark browns to make my shadows appear deeper versus a black because I'm just so fair that I need something softer. It's funny doing eyes first and having tape because it really gives you the perception that things are a lot lighter than they actually are. So I always like to just put the amount that I think I need, even if I feel a little bit like, mm, it could be darker. Because the second I take the tape off and I do my foundation, everything is going to look a lot darker. I'm going to take this tiny, tiny Covet S185 brush and I'm going to go in the shade Bing. Is it like Chandler Bing? My friend uh, Melissa and I went to this friend's pop-up downtown Chicago and it was so fun. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw stories and photos and things like that, which if you're not following me on Instagram, link is below. I really like this Bing shade. It's a pretty true purple, which is fun. Oh, so anyways, at this pop-up, they had, uh, it was inside of a bar and then in an area of the bar, they had like a bunch of friends themed things. They had like the door, the front door from Monica and Rachel's apartment. They had the dog that Julie buys when he moves out of Chandler's apartment and that he ultimately ends up giving to Chandler. Um, the drinks were like themed off of episodes or just like particular instances. There was one called Mama's Little Cheesecake and it was so good. Okay, I'm gonna take the brush that actually came in the original Naked palette, funny enough. We're just gonna mix together Bang Bang and Ambition wear like you're here with me <laughs> and kind of see what those hues look like once they're on the eye. I'm taking the brush from the original Naked palette and a little bit of MAC Fix Plus. Oh, that is gorgeous. Okay, I love that. See, this is the benefit of me not doing one eye off camera is that I get to give you like my authentic reaction. Ooh, ooh. Okay. No ambition needed, just a little bit of bang bang. Okay, I'm gonna go back into Privacy, which is that matte brown, and just kind of help mesh those two colors together and pop it in the crease a little bit to add a brown hue there. Then I'm gonna go back with that smaller brush into Bing, further blend things out. I think it might be time to take off this tape because my eyes are getting irritated. And then what I do when I take off the tape, because there is a very stark line, is I take that blending brush and I start to kind of just blend the lower lash line predominantly. And things will kind of 
end up naturally blending out when you put your foundation on, but this kind of helps the situation. It might just take a little bit of ambition to kind of mesh privacy and bang bang together a little bit more seamlessly. Yeah, I like that. Now take that really dirty brush, <laughs> the one that I've been using with everything, and just kind of run it across the lower lash line. Not precisely at all, very messily. My concealer and everything will kind of help blend things together, but that just kind of acts as a nice first base. And then I'm gonna take Hot Shot, which is that white shade, and bump down these shadows around the brow a little bit and under the eye. My newest favorite scent from Bath & Body Works is Frosted Co Coconut Snowball, which is what I have burning behind me. Alex's aunt had it at her house on Thanksgiving, and I'm in love. I'm probably gonna take Turn On and put that on the inner corner, but first I need to do my face. So I've already primed my face. Uh, first I'm gonna go in with some eyeliner. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Rock and Roll Liner in Bedroom Black. And I'm gonna tight line with this. It's very hard to tight line and talk, so I'm not gonna. I'm going to do a very sharp wing, and I haven't fully blended out these lines from the tape yet because I'm actually gonna use those to help guide where I want to put the liquid liner. This is one of my favorite ways to put my liquid liner on if I'm gonna do a very sharp, long wing that you can actually really see with false lashes on. That line that the tape leaves is kind of my guide when it comes to doing that very long liquid liner. So what I do is I look down into my mirror and then I literally just line the uh, brush up a little bit above where the tape is because I don't want it exactly there because it is a little low. I just want it slightly above that and I do start with the line first and then I fill that in and then I start to go on to the actual lash bed. The right eye was giving me quite a bit of trouble today but practice, practice, practice and uh, you will improve. This is my current like foundation concealer drawer, so let's pick a foundation, shall we? I feel like I've been showing you a lot of the Flower Beauty one, so I will do a different one today just for the sake of having something a little a little different, but I do love that one. I'm going to use one of the new shades by L'Oreal. It is part of their True Match line, and they've added a bunch of new shades, and this is the Fresh Ivory N05. Yes, they have 0.5 shades versus just having a number one, number two, number three. So amazing. The one thing I would say about this foundation is that I wish that they would change the packaging. I love that they added new shades and that is a priority over changing the packaging, I think, because if people can't wear it, then the packaging doesn't really matter. Um, but I do wish that they would add a pump to it because this is not sanitary and it, it's just, I just don't like it. This does have a little bit of SPF. It has SPF 17, and I'm in the neutral range. They have neutral, warm, and cool, and I always like to kind of categorize myself into the neutral realm since my skin is so pink. I don't really want to, like, pull that pinkness. I just want to neutralize it. I have two really big breakouts right now. I have this one over here on my cheek and this one over here on the top of my cheek. It's great. I just like to ride around with me in life. I picked up another one of the Revolution concealers in the shade C2. The Ulta I was at didn't have like the larger, newer version. They did have the foundation, but guys, I do not need any more foundation in my life, so I didn't get it right now. I was being very strong with Christmas around the corner. You know, figured just best to pass on it at the moment. But I do love this concealer for acne spots and redness. I'm going to use that uh, really unique sponge, the like memory foam one. I find I actually like it better dry than wet. I do still clean it with the Dr. Bronner's Bard Soap, which, which you should all buy if you have any kind of makeup sponge. It's a bar soap that you can get uh, in the organic section at Target by like the Burt's Bees stuff. It's called Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap, and it is amazing. This sponge, I don't like to clean it day of. I'll clean it like in the evenings when I'm spot cleaning some other brushes because I just feel like it blends the product in just fine dry. The whole spot on my face is red from that pimple. Okay, I'm going to take a tiny dot of the Clever FX Play, Power Play in N Fair. Just like boop, boop, and that's it of that because it is very, very potent. And then I'm going to go in with my Hourglass Veil Retouching Fluid, which is a very light coverage concealer and a lot more on the neutral side 
where the Cover FX one is very, very light and brightening. I, get, I do like this sponge because it kind of manipulates itself to kind of curve to my eye while the Beauty Blender really kind of holds its own shape. This guy kind of arches itself around my eye perfectly. So I can get very close to the lash line, which I definitely, definitely need. I like combining a little bit of that lighter shade with the Cover FX one and the Hourglass one because then it brightens, but it's not like, whew, I'm very white under the eyes. I cannot stand having foundation on my lips. I just like to spend a minute here with this sponge and make sure everything is blended and that there's no creases because before I go in with powder, I really want everything to be blended out and I want to have all the cream products on my face that I need before I go in with any powder. So I'm going to take an extra second and add a little more concealer to this super pesky guy on my cheek here. I love the ability to manipulate the sponge just like with under the eye you can you know fold it and kind of squeeze it to be any different size you want it to be. Now before I go in with powder I'm going to take a little bit of the ColourPop liquid or Super Shock shadow highlighter in fire from the Kathleen Lights Zodiac collection. I'm not going to put any on the pimple on my cheek. I'm going to kind of bypass over it. I will put powder highlight there just because it's unavoidable, but I don't really want to bring any more attention to that spot. And in fact, I'm going to put just a touch more of concealer. That was a horrible sound. The best way I find to pack concealer into a very tiny spot like that is just over and over again, very tiny dabs on the same spot will just mesh the concealer right into that spot. Taking my La Mer powder that was a gift. I feel like I always have to preface using that by saying that because this stuff's so expensive. Now make sure there's no creases under the eye because you don't want to set a crease. And then boom. Boom. Now I'm going to take that sponge and press the powder into the skin. Love that about this sponge is that you can use it for liquid and powder products. That's my experience at least. I don't know if that's how it's marketed. And I feel like it helps me not get so much powder onto the face if I use this sponge over a brush. Question, do you guys watch Grey's Anatomy? I'm still an avid watcher. My friend Melissa and I watch it every single week and they are on a very long break right now and we're both fully going through withdrawal. Let's go on to the lower lashes. I'm, I'm gonna kinda speed through this cause it can get a little boring. I'm just gonna take all the shades I put on the upper lid and put them on the lower lid. I've brought back out my bourgeois bronzer. Uh, it looks like a little chocolate bar. And I'm gonna use this today on a random brush. Instead of pulling my contour down, I pull it up like towards the temple because I want my face to be lifted versus brought down. So when I do my bronzer, that's kind of what I do is I start right here where I know my cheekbone ends and then I kind of pull upwards towards the forehead. Do the same thing with my blush. There's not really anything that I like pull downwards on my face with. I always want everything to be lifted upwards. It's like a little magic trick. I do not kind of untour my nose in any kind of fancy fashion. I feel like I'm just asking for trouble if I do that. So I just kind of run the brush messily across that area of my face. I like to pull my bronzer like down my neck a little bit because I am so fair. Kind of helps things match up a little bit better for me. In my opinion, I've really been enjoying these L'Oreal Paradise Enchanted Scented Blushes. So I think I'm going to use one of these today. I'm going to go with the shade Fantastical. Favorite blush brush is Sonia Keshek number 29. And I'm just going to boop, boop. And then same way I apply my bronzer, I start on the apple of the cheek though, for blush obviously. And then I kind of sweep upwards towards the temple. Never bring it down because that's going to make your cheek look droopy. We want to lift, lift, lift. I don't ever apply my brush with that kind of motion. I do like, you know, circular, circular motions. And then I go across the nose because if you think about like where you would naturally kind of look a little flushed if you were like out in the cold or out in the sun, your nose would probably be a little red. 
and some blushes as loud as it sounds they kind of like develop so you'll put it on and you'll be like okay that looks fine and then two seconds later you're like oh my gosh why did I have so much blush on my face it's I don't know what it is but it's like the more it settles on your cheek the darker it looks sometimes and uh I hate when that happens because it makes me look a little scary I'm taking that bronzer blush and I'm gonna mess mess mesh the blush and bronzer together pat 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 new highlight that I picked up is the molten peach by Maybelline this is part of their ugh, this is so hard to open why why I've nearly dug my finger into it every time the molten peach <sighs> deep breaths this is the Maybelline <laughs> master chrome molten peach highlighter and spotted it at Ulta. It looks amazing. I've used it a few times. And I'm gonna use it today. This headband is really starting to like pinch behind my ears. I take it even like right below my brow bone, just very messily with that huge brush. Not precise at all. And I'm not going to emphasize this spot by sweeping over it because that'll kind of remove the concealer that I have put there. So I'm being very careful with that little acne spot. This one's fine because I'm not putting any product there that's going to draw more attention to it, but something like this that's right on the top of your cheekbones, a lot of times if you put a lot of heavy uh, highlighter there in a sweeping motion after you've spent all that time concealing it, really defeats the purpose of using all of that concealer because it just brings attention to it. Before moving on to lips, I'm going to set everything with the Maybelline Master Fix and some of my beloved MAC Fix Plus super extra and I got a fan off of Amazon because I like setting sprays. Since I put so many powders on my face after doing my liquid liner I am going to go in and make sure it's just as intense black as it can be. New mascara I'm trying is the superhero one by It Cosmetics. I think this was the free like birthday gift this year at Ulta. I believe it each on my nose. Uh, so this is my second time using it. First time went well. Let's hope this time does as well. My eyes look very green right now. And I'm dropping things again. Oh, no, I just got mascara on my couch. Well, I don't know if it's best to let it dry a little bit or to go in while it's wet. I'm just going to wait a little bit. Oh, guys, I need a personal assistant who just follows me around all day and just cleans up my messes because I make a lot of messes. I break a lot of things. Alex said to me the other day, he thinks it's amazing that I have a passion and talent for makeup where I have to be very precise and apply products onto people's faces very delicately, yet I break and destroy so many things in my home, just with my clumsiness alone. I think it's because I try to move too quickly. That mascara looks really good. Um, and while I raved about the Kylie lip, I don't think I'm gonna use that. I think it's a little too deep for what I've got going on color-wise with the eyes. Okay, what lip liner do I want to use? I really feel like I want glitter on the eyes, but also I feel like once I'm out in public, I'll be happy that I didn't put a bunch of glitter on my eyes because sometimes, guys, I really stand out when I go out, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. I'm just not looking for that tonight. I'm going to use the Makeup Forever Lip Liner in 11. This is how I kind of pick my lip colors. I kind of put them next to my eye. I don't always feel like I need to be all matchy-matchy, so sometimes I don't match them up. Other times I do. I'm going to go this one. This is the Joseph Colors Warm and Fuzzy. I go back to this time and time again. It's one of my favorites. I feel like a completely different person with this hairstyle, and that's kind of exactly what I needed. I mentioned in a video that I posted recently that something happened, and I'm kind of going through this transitional period right now in my life, and I just needed something that was a little bit of a change, kind of refreshing, made me feel like a new person. And although this is temporary, it's that looking in the mirror and not recognizing yourself that kind of makes me feel a little bit liberate, liberated <laughs> and uh, gives me like a new, a new spunk, a new spirit. So I love it. It's also uh, giving me opportunity to play with different kinds of combinations of makeup on my face because I do my own makeup all the time. I have had the same hair for my whole life because I'm a redhead so I have never done anything like super permanent changing it besides cutting it which is a big change but not the same as color um, I've had the same skin my whole life like so many things have always been the same that it could feel mundane doing the same 
makeup on the same face, having to play with the same colors or just, you know, you get what I'm saying. Just can get a little mundane. And this has really, I was taking pictures, yes, of myself last night and I literally didn't feel like the same person just by looking at my hair in a different way and it was really really cool and it is really cool so so i'm loving it if you don't love it please don't feel the need to tell me because it's irrelevant and uh yeah but alex and i are gonna go on our first date in like months and months and months so i hope you have a p very pleasant evening and enjoyed this video if you did let me know in the comments down below and support this channel by subscribing by sharing it with a friend by continuing to watch all of that jazz, and I will see you all very soon in my next one. Bye, guys.